Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a quick look at the old forecast function and then explain how the new forecast functions work, in particular forecast ETS and forecast linear. So first of all, the old forecast function worked like this. So you've got a series of numbers here representing years and some sales values and you want the forecast function to tell you what the next number or the next year would be based on these figures. So if I just delete this one off and then start typing out the function. Now when you start typing out forecast you can see the one at the bottom there has got a little triangle which means it's just for backward compatibility so I'll just double click that. The X is either a number or a date so I'm just going to put a number for this example, 8. The known, the known Ys in this case is column B. And the known Xs is, in this case, column A. Close the bracket, click the tick, and it gives you the forecast. So that's the old way of doing it. So if I come back over this side of the screen, just drop my screen down a little bit. So I've just, if I just come out of come out of these so let's do that one again with a date this time so I've got a different set of data so I've got the first uh, 31st of January all the way to the 31st of December and then some figures and you can see my data goes up and down in little trends increases and decreases and so on and so on in little groups of three and I've done that on purpose just to show you a feature that there is but let's just recreate this one so that one was using a number this is going to use this date. So equals forecast. Open the brackets. The date this time. So my known Ys is this column. And then the known Xs is that column. So it gives you £12.09 is what it's forecasting for that period. Now, what you should use, instead of using that, you should use this function, which comes up when you do type equals forecast anyhow. If you spell it right, it does. So there it is, forecast linear. So I double click on that. I get exactly the same information coming up there as the old one does. And I do exactly the same in terms of selecting the data. And it should give me exactly the same result. If it didn't, I would be worried. But it does. Now I've already formatted these to pounds. Now where this changes slightly is this ETS um, suffix at the end there. So dot ETS, and it means exponential triple sooth smoothing. Um, it probably is soothing as well. But basically it's a very complex forecasting um, procedure. And you can see how it works as soon as you start typing it in. So again, equals forecast. And there it is, ETS, double click. So then we get a target date. So target date for us is that one. And then the values, comma, the values. And then comma, the timeline, which is that. Now, all the rest of these arguments are optional, but you've got this thing called seasonality, which is what I've actually preset on this one. We've got a, every three months it dips so I've set that up purposely, but you can type anything you like in there. So if I just do a comma, well, not anything you like, a period. So I'm going to, a number, I'm going to put three. If you left it blank, if you put it to zero, Excel would understand that there was no seasonality. If you left it blank, it would try and work it out based on your data, but you can also tell it, and I am going to tell it. And then next one, a comma, you've got the option to have this sitting as zeros or automatic um, so if there's missing data it'll just work out what the data should be based on the previous figure and the next figure so I'm going to put one there so I want it to do that and then the next one you'd have to pick one of these what you do do you want it to pick the average of those two dates or, or what do you want to do or average those two figures so I do want to do the average or I could sum them up 
or any one of those options. So I'm putting a one again and now I'm closing the bracket. So as I said before, you don't need to put any of these in if you don't wish. You can leave them blank. But if I click the tick for that one, it comes up with a totally different figure now because I've put some seasonality in it. And if you if you start changing this date, so if I change that date to October, that's changed again. Put it back, control Z. Now, if I show you a little forecast sheet based on this, so I've gone onto the data tab, and if I click on forecast, it gives you the, the forecast. You've got the upper and lower and the actual forecast figures on there. So there's the upper and lower, and I can change this to match the same date, 31st of December. And you can see how that sits in there. So three lines. And in options there, you've got options where you can set it to have a it's not detecting anything automatically, but I've typed it in. So if I put three there, it starts to look a little more like um, how your data set would be as you progress forward. Uh, so that's the forecast sheet. Set it, I've set it to manually. These are the same arguments that you've just done in, in the end there. Um, we didn't want it to be on zeros. We want it to do an average. That's what it's doing. And, and then you, you click on create. And it will just create that for you on a separate sheet and you get the figures what's actually sitting there forecast lower upper and then back to this so if i just did this graph um without using that that forecast option if i just did a a normal graph a line graph and put a trend line on this line graph let's just get this uh myself some space here so there's a graph let's get rid of this comment box for now so there's a graph and let's say you want a trend line on this graph trend line and you want to go forward 12 periods like so that's just a straight line, so it doesn't give you any um, sort of like realistic dips, like you can see there's dips in this, this data. So this system that we're using at the moment is a lot more accurate than just doing a graph like that. So the, the forecast sheet is giving you, come out of this, these sort of different options, but they're all, none of them are straight lines. Now back to this. Now the confidence for that is set to preset at 95%. I didn't show you that when it came up, but um, if I delete that and just do that again, I'll show you that where I got that information from. So when you when you go to the forecast sheet on the data tab and into options, it's all it's automatically set at 95%. So what does that mean in terms of particular months? So if I do this next one, so equals forecast. So this is this one, confint. So your target date is the 31st, comma, your values are the same values, comma, and then your timeline, and then the rest are optional. So I'll just leave it at that. So it's come up with £4.98. Now if I put that to October, it says £4.92. So where's it getting that from? Let's have a go back to this one and create our little forecast sheet and create. In fact, let's go forward to the 31st of December. Create. Let's move this out of the way. It puts the figures in, you see. So in October, if I do a little formula in, in in October and say equals the forecast cell minus this one comes up with that figure there £4.92 
there. 31st of October, £4.92. So that's where that function is getting that figure from. If I put that back to December, and then go and have a look, £4.98 is getting that from. It's the difference between the figures the um, in your forecast, the actual forecast itself, and then the lower and upper confidence bands so that was a quick look at um, the forecast function and how the new one works well it's not that new now it's a good four years old came out in 2016 but how they can be utilized with your data rather than just looking at a straight trend line which doesn't really give you much of an idea of what happens this allows you to put some smoothing in in, in in this example you've got peaks and troughs along your data and you're telling it what to do with those peaks and troughs it also uses the most i've put there look it uses it gives weight to the most recent data points so your most recent point and then going backwards in time gets the 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 heaviest data when it works this out so if all these last three figures for example were quite low in fact, let's see what happens if I change these. So, so let's go four, five, six. You see, that's all gone pear shaped now. So I've obviously gone a bit mad with that. So I'll just put it back how it was. But it does give weight to to that. We don't want to be going into negative. Some companies probably will be. But anyhow, that's the uh, forecast functions and how it works. I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.